silence. You can just hear the little critters. It's like the sound of nature. Yeah. This home is occupied, so it... Yeah. Um, there's Catalina, right out there. There's a bunny rabbit. Hey, yeah. bunny. A bunny. Um, there's somewhere in here I want to get married. Uh, maybe over there, but the, I, I imagine like the tables and chairs and everything. Mm. People gathering under the oak. Um, and then you can walk up. Is this the oak? That's our one oak. Actually, there's another oak over there, but we call it one oak. Okay, so I'm here with uh, my big sister, Sean Korn, and I've come to the mountaintop to see the guru and get, <laughs> and get a little advice on a subject in which I'm, generally I'm well-educated thanks to my mom. Uh, I wouldn't say I'm intelligent, but I'm well-educated. Uh, and I've, I'm very fortunate in many ways. One of my um, areas in which I have um, a remarkable lack of talent or skill is relationships, and I think many of us are challenged in that way. You, um, your life, uh, most people don't really know much about your private life, but you've had a stable relationship, I understand, for many years. Mm -hmm. That sounds like magic to me. How does that work? <laughs> like a mythical realm. It, I feel really fortunate. I, Al and I have been together for almost 12 years, and the one thing I always say about my relationship with Al is, well, Al doesn't want to change a thing about me. He's very supportive of who I am and has no interest in infiltrating his fears or ideology onto my vision or my dreams. Uh, he wants me to fully be who I am and he celebrates all aspects of me, the light and the dark. I, on the other hand, I'm 100% committed to changing every single aspect of that man. From the way that he raises his kids, the way that he communicates, the work that he does. And his response to that is, of course you do. You want to change the world, why would I be exempt? But he doesn't personalize it. He doesn't, he doesn't, he doesn't, he finds it more charming and funny that that's just my nature and that it's not a slight against who he is. And my feeling about him is that he's so self-confident and he has such a strong sense of who he is that he doesn't have to diminish me or change me in order to feel good about himself. Um, but so your, our takeaway from that, since we can't all be Al and Sean, is um, if someone wants to change us to sort of, in a way, take a step back and have a sense of humor and spaciousness or yeah. patience about that. Uh -huh. And if, um, and hopefully we can get to a point where we don't want to change the other person. <laughs> Wouldn't that be nice? I wouldn't like know them. that. I wouldn't know that. But right. you know, but it's, it's just, it's just my nature. It's just, I, I, I'm right. constantly transforming myself and I'm always right. into growth. And he just accepts me 100% who I am. It's a good combination, right? Yeah. yeah. And if he chooses to grow, he's, like I said, he's got the self-confidence where he's going to make that choice on his own, not mm. because I'm nagging or badgering him. Mm. And I've had to learn in the relationship. Al's really taught me um, how to be more, more accepting, more open, more patient. Mm. I'm New Jersey aggressive and intense and Al's Midwestern and, and really mindful and, and soft-spoken and So the generous. yoga one's the aggressive, intense <laughs> one and the normal I'm guy ready. is like the kind of enlightened, spacious, relaxed Please. guy. I say yeah. Al wakes up in the morning and he looks at me and his first words always is, oh my God, I love you so much. No way. I, I, every morning, I love you. That's like out of the notebook I or something. I am so grateful. And my first you know, response in the morning is kind of like, Arr. and it takes me <laughs> about two and a half hours of yoga every morning just to be someone kind of pleasant. And wow. Al just wakes up really kind of connected and, and wow. open and he's just a chill kind of guy. And for whatever reason, our dynamics work. Um, and it's been, I feel very blessed. I, I, I know that the reason that I've had success in my, in my field and in what I do is because I have such a strong anchor and support behind me and someone who believes in me and creates yeah. space in my life yeah. so that I can live my visions. Whether I succeed or fail, it doesn't matter to him. He just wants me to step into my power fully and he's proud to be able to bear witness to it. Um, so I feel we'll I put feel Al's phone number down here so that all the girls can uh, <laughs> everyone and everyone watching this is like, damn, mm -hmm. Al. Yeah. What's your number? So, um, yeah, I mean, that's something I've always found really attractive is independence yeah. in women or in, in men, if I were a woman or gay, um, and spaciousness, that's mm -hmm. self-confidence, but I find that it's pretty rare mm -hmm. and 
particularly for someone perhaps like you who's doing great work or like me who's doing a lot of work but not great work mm -hmm. um, you know we're so busy and independent and we have to do our thing it's mm -hmm. really hard to hang with that yeah so yeah. so how do you know free advice since we have the camera on here <laughs> pinned down so what can I how can I find my owl who's hopefully you know got nicer legs I don't know if you go out there and <laughs> I don't know if you go out in there and find them I think yeah. that I attracted someone like an owl because of the work I was doing on myself and at that point when owl came into my life I wasn't really looking if yeah. I was I was available to uh, I guess I was available to love but I wasn't attached to it I didn't need it to define me it would have been nice to be in partnership but at that point I was really interested in other things I was just a little older a little bit more mature maybe and and I think because when we first started dating I was more independent and I didn't come across as desperate or needy or marry me and fulfill all my fantasies so that I don't actually have to be my own soul. Um, right. That wasn't what I brought to the table. And so if we can actually ex love and accept ourselves, my tree is something Pema Children talks about a lot, mm -hmm. then in a way we're ready yeah. at that point. And you start to attract, you know, where you're at, you're always going to attract your wounds. And not to suggest that Al and I haven't attracted each other's wounds. Right. You know, uh, we both have our stuff that we have to work on. Um, but we're, I'm not committed to Al fixing me and he's not committed to me fixing him but when stuff comes up we deal with it we communicate about it we don't hold on to it it doesn't define the relationship we have a bigger vision Al's got kids and his focus is on trying to make them the best men and women that they could possibly be and to really That's be present focus. yeah and to be really present in this relationship and to love me Al just wants to Al's goal in life is to make me his children his mother happy and to do whatever he can in his capability to help support that in whatever way it's going to work for us. And, uh, you know, my job is to torture him completely. Uh -huh. uh, and, and, you know, I haven't succeeded yet. Right. But, uh, you know, I feel really don't grateful. Get him. But I don't want to suggest for one moment that it's not, you know, it's not hard and it's, there's not challenging moments. We have our moments. Really? You think living with Sean Corn? <laughs> yeah, that sounds difficult. Um, yeah, it would be a challenge. But, yeah. Thank you. Um, well, if I get rid of him, Waylon, you're, you're next. Yeah, I'm next in line. You hear that? No budding, <laughs> guys. Um, okay, so now that we've solved relationships, yeah. um, I wanted to um, ask you a little bit, bit of advice, something I'm a little bit obsessed of. I haven't mentioned, but I grew up in a Buddhist family. Right, I heard. I don't know I if heard. you knew that. Yeah. And, um, Funny, because I thought you were Jewish. Yeah, well, I am half Jewish. Oh. Um, all the Chester. Yeah. Uh, but... Um, you know, yoga obviously in the last 30 years has exploded in popularity and it's changing rapidly uh, in the last 50 years since Light on Yoga. And now you can be a teacher, tra you know, go to a two week teacher training, get your certificate, and boom, you can, <clears throat> or so many people think you can be a great yoga star and it's a viable career. And a lot of that's great, it's a real industry. People actually call it that now. Mm -hmm. And um, I have no problem with any of that. Making your living doing a good thing is great. But, um, I thought maybe to ask you on behalf of yoga teachers all over the world, um, your advice for a young yoga teacher, should your goal be a career or should your goal be, you know? Um, it's a great question. And I mean, obviously the honest answer there is that odds are if you're going to go into the field of teaching yoga, you're going to be busting your ass teaching 16 classes a week. If you're lucky, you can pay your rent. You got to do this because you love it and you want to be of service and it, it's something that impacted you so greatly that you're finding the way to communicate that love in a way that influences your own community. It's probably a mistake to get into it because you think you're going to make a living. I remember telling my dad when I first got into this because they all thought it was ridiculous that I was sure. going to be a yoga teacher. And I remember saying to my dad, I'll never make any money at this but I'll live every single day of my life happy. And I meant it then and I mean it now. Like I really know that if any of the success that I, I have all went away, I'd still wake up in the morning and teach yoga. I have to. It's just part of who yeah. I am. It's my dharma. That reminds me about, this is a personal aside, but about eight years in, about two years ago when I was struggling and I was nearly losing my house and all this stuff, I um, actually emailed you and I said, you know, what? Like, I don't even know what I said. I just felt depressed and like giving up, you know? And you said, Waylon, I have the feeling that like me, you know, if you or I went out of business, mm -hmm. we'd wake up tomorrow and do the exact same thing. You're like doing what you love, so you're stuck with it. And that's yeah. like the good news in a way. Mm -hmm. It is the good news, and I'm yeah. really grateful. Like, thank you, God, for not only letting me do what I love to do, but also at the same time, letting it be sustainable. 
and but who would have thought mm -hmm. and so but also there's a real shadow to it I struggle every single day with the amount of attention I get as many people love me as as many people feel sure. very comfortable vilifying me and that can be really hurtful it can make you feel very misunderstood there's a shadow to this kind of success and sometimes I think people who set their goals to be a famous yoga teacher or a rock star yoga aren't really understanding the shadow aspect of it and to me this is a healing practice you're gonna get that mirror back to you to reflect back your biggest fears so I'm always checking in with myself like if I'm buying my own hype or if I'm starting to think I'm all that I know that that's kind of like the cosmic trip up and I'm not willing to get tripped up like that so when it comes up I deal with it I breathe into it this does right. not define who I am I get it's a part of the deal part of my deal but it's not who I am it, it can't be yeah. um, it's I just also an illusion notice, uh -huh. I also notice that you have, surround yourself with strong friends you know yeah. girlfriends or whomever who will tell you what they think and I think that's something we've all learned mm -hmm. again and again is super important that yeah. Like I said, um, I was interviewed by the Denver Post recently, and I said, uh, you know, loyalty is not important to me. In, in friends, mm -hmm. honesty is important yeah. to me. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I would agree. Well, loyalty is important to me also, but without a doubt, honesty is. By loyalty, I, I mean like the yes man factor. Like I don't need you to mm -hmm. be nice to me. I need, you know, you need to love me if you're my friend. We're friends, but I need honesty. I rely on that, especially because. I get that I've got this responsibility and this thing that I'm doing and I have an influence on people. I, I get that this is what's happening. I need the people in my life to make sure that I stay impeccable and that I stay authentic and that if I'm off course, I might not see it. If I get caught up in it, I might not be able to see it. I rely on the people in my life who I know love me, who do not judge me, to say to me, uh, girl, you need to get it together. You need to get clear. Here's what we're perceiving. And I might fight and, and you know struggle with their perception, but I'm going to know in my soul that they only have not only my best interest, but the best interest of the community. And that there we're all working together to support a bigger vision. And if I'm getting off track, I need them yeah. to let me know. In the same way, I'll let them know too. Because what's happening, I mean, all the all this yoga and all this stuff that's happening, there is a bigger vision. That's ha There's something else that's happening, and you're a part of it too, that is so beyond all of us. We're just pawns, and you have certain talents, I have certain talents, and spirits like, okay, we need Waylon, we need Sean, we need Shiva, we need uh, Baron, we need uh, Derek, we need all of them who have a myriad of different voices and therefore a myriad of different influences and outreach to turn on the myriad of different personalities that exist in the world to teach them about the very same thing, which is this interconnectedness. And so I need not to pretend I'm someone else and to find a different voice. I need to be my voice and be committed to that voice, but also take responsibility when I'm not on my game. And if I get in the way of this vision, I need you to tell me that I'm in the way. I rely on that. In the same way I would say the same thing to you if I thought you were off, off track. Yeah. You know? I mean, if. It hasn't yeah. come up no. in 10 years, but... Mm -mm. Right. You know, so to the, the teachers that are out there, you know, the, the, the advice I was given when I was a very young teacher was have fun and be yourself, really important. And that advice, out of all the advice I ever got, was the thing that really Who landed. Who was that from? It's a great little story, if you want to hear a little story. Yeah, I think it, we have time. Mm -hmm. Do we? Yeah, There's we a do. little voice in my head that says, Sean, if you say no to this, you're going to say no to every opportunity. You're going to shut a door. You have to say yes. But I, uh, I'm battling. Finally, uh, while this is happening, her boyfriend is just doodling. And I thought not paying attention to this ridiculous exchange between these two women. And finally I said, okay, yes, I'll do it. And Daniel then hands me this little piece of paper and it was like this uh, a tag, you know, like a graffiti tag. But it was backwards and I couldn't read it, really read what it said. So I had to stand in front of a mirror and put it up against my chest. And what it said when you looked into the mirror was be yourself and have fun, really important. It's still hanging up in my office. Wow. And I mean, here he wasn't even a yoga teacher. He was, you know, but that advice stuck with, stuck with me. Be yourself and have fun, really important. And I think that that's been my commitment as a yoga teacher is whether people like it or not. I, who you meet in the yoga room and who you meet outside the yoga room is the same person, except outside the yoga room I have a more foul mouth. And, uh, and I like to talk more about inappropriate and dirty right. things than I will in a yoga room. But you're gonna meet the same person. Be yourself and I try to have fun. Even though I'm a more serious-minded person, I know how to play. Words to live by from Sean Korn at the top of Topanga Canyon mm -hmm. in her, by her yurt. By my yurt. This is, this is, well, it's not my home. So 
sunset. It's like the moment. This yeah. will be my home one day. I will have a home.